Hello, Mr. President. Thank you very much for providing Fox News with this opportunity for an interview. I'm joined here by my colleague, re reporter Greg Palcott, and uh, we're very interested in proceeding. Uh, as you know, there's been a number of breaking news stories uh, which uh, we need to discuss with you. The UN has just released its chemical weapon report. Uh, my colleague, uh, Greg Palcott, will be discussing that with you in a moment. Uh, I want to talk to you about uh, other major developments regarding the chemical weapons plan, uh, which has been agreed to by the U.S. and the Russian government. Uh, do you agree with this plan to secure uh, and to eventually destroy the chemical weapons? Uh, last week, we uh, joined uh, the international agreement of preventing the uh, WMD, chemical WMD. Uh, and part of this agreement, the main part, is to not to uh, manufacture these armaments, uh, not to store, and not to use, and of course not to distribute. Uh, and part of it is to get rid of those uh, materials, the chemical uh, materials. So of course when we, uh, when we are part now of this agreement, we have to agree on that chapter. You have to agree on? on getting rid of all these armed, I mean, to destroy. Uh, to why, destroy do you, why do you agree now? Uh, no, actually, it's not now. If you go back uh, 10 years ago, uh, when we were a uh, non-permanent member of the, United, uh, of the Security Council in 2003, uh, we proposed to the United Nations to Security Council, Syrian proposal is to get rid of the WMD from the Middle East to have a free uh, chemical free zone or WMD free zone in the Middle East. And actually the United States opposed that proposal. So as conviction, we wanted to see our region free of WMD, all kind of WMD because it's very volatile region. It's uh, always uh, on the verge of uh, anarchy and uh, wars. So that's why we, do, we cannot say that we agreed now. Well, we, we know that uh, President Obama and Secretary Kerry have said in the past that you were lying. Now, that's their words, not mine, uh, when you said that you didn't have any chemical weapons. A few days ago in an interview with Russia Channel 24, uh, you admitted you had chemical weapons stockpiles. Uh, now, I, I just want to make sure we're clear here before we go forward. Uh, do you or do you not have chemical weapons? Uh, first of all, regarding what Obama and Kerry said, I dare them to say that we said no once. We never said it. You, n you uh, never said no. No, no. We never well, said. We never tell said. Us now. We never said no. We never said yes. Can we you always say, say yeah? But we always say it's classified issue. We don't have to discuss it. And if we want to talk about it, we say if. And if means you, can, you may have it, you may not. So this is blatant uh, lie. Okay, but can you tell us now? Do you have chemical weapons or don't you? Yes, when we uh, joined the. Uh, when we joined the treaty last week, it means that we have, and we said, we said that. So it's not a secret anymore. So, so as far as the American people, you, you, you will uh, agree that you do have a stockpile of chemical weapons? Of course, that's why we joined the international agreement, in order to get rid of Now, my, my colleagues, uh, my former colleagues on Capitol Hill are kind of skeptical about your agreement with this plan. Uh, they say it's just a stalling tactic. Is it? Well, a stalling tactic, well, what's it, to join the agreement? Yeah, that you're just stalling right now for time, that you really don't have any intention of going along with the plan. Are you well, stalling? When, when you join the agreement, you have mechanism, and you have to obey these mechanism. And according to the history of Syria, we never made agreement with any party in this world, and we didn't fulfill uh, what we have to do, so, our, our role in that agreement, so, so, never. So you would say uh, that President Obama then can trust you to follow through? Uh, I don't think that President Obama should trust me first. The Syrian people should trust me, not President Obama. That's uh, okay. second. When you talk about agreements and international relations, you have mechanisms. And those mechanisms should be based on uh, objective criteria. So if you want to trust or not trust, watch this country, see if they obey those mechanisms and those rules or not. This is where you can trust him or not. So it's not personal relation. I understand. So you. You're under a tight time deadline. Are you going to be able to provide the list that is part of the agreement? Exactly. List of chemical it weapons? is part. You should provide a list of uh, the arsenal that you have. 
to the organization of the chemical weapon. And, and are you and are you open? Are you ready to open chemical weapon sites to international inspection? We didn't say that we we are joining uh, partially that agreement or that organization. We joined fully. We send the letter. We send the document, and we are committed to the four requirements of this agreement. Well, as a, a, are you, would you be from? Would you be ready to let our Fox News cameras uh, have access to some of the chemical weapons site so that the American people will be able to see for themselves? Is yeah. that possible? Uh, in Syria, we have institutions, we have rules, we have conditions. So we have to go back to this institution to ask them for that request. And after they uh, study the, the request, they can uh, say yes or not. But it's not about the president to take that decision alone. So we have institution. You can do that after the, this interview. You can ask for the permission. Can, can you just destroy these chemical weapons uh, quickly? And if not, why not? I think it's a very complicated operation technically. And it needs a lot, a lot of money. Some estimated about a billion for the Syrian stockpile. We're not experts in that regard. But that the estimates that we've had uh, recently. Uh, so quickly depends. That you have to ask the experts what do they mean by quickly because it has certain schedule. It needs a year, maybe a little bit less or a little bit more. So well, what since, do you mean by quickly? Since it, since it is the United States which demanded uh, that you give up chemical weapons, would you be prepared uh, to turn over your chemical weapons to the U.S. government for the purposes of safely destroying those weapons? Uh, as I said, it, uh, it needs a lot of money. It needs about one billion. Uh, it's very detrimental to the environment uh, if uh, the American administration is ready to pay those money and uh, to take the responsibility of bringing toxic materials to the United States, why don't they do it? But of course, it's going to be in cooperation with the specified organization in but, the United but, Nations. But you're prepared to hand them over at some point for the safe destruction of them? It doesn't matter where. As I said, at the end, if you're going to destroy them, it doesn't matter where they go. Are there any conditions? No, we don't have any condition to send it anywhere. At the end, if it's going to be destroyed, it could be destroyed anywhere. It's, as I said, it's very detrimental to the environment. So it, whoever country is ready to take the risk of those materials, let them take it. I just have one final question before I give it over to my colleague, reporter Greg. Do you have a security agreement with the Russian government that if and when you give up your chemical weapons, that you, in fact, uh, will be protected so that you're not vulnerable to attacks yeah. uh, because we know there are other nations which gave up their weapons and then they were attacked. You know, the uh, Russian role politically was very efficient during the crisis in Syria during the last two years and a half. And they vetoed three times in the Security Council. So actually, they protected Syria politically. They don't have to have a uh, security agreement with Syria regarding this. It's not about uh, only about uh, the, uh, the army and the war. It's about politics, first of all. So I think they are doing their job without having this agreement. So, you, so just to summarize, you do have uh, chemical weapons. You're prepared to go along with the plan to, uh, uh, to destroy them and that you're prepared to, uh, uh, to cooperate with the international community in that. Again, as I said, the, what, what you mentioned, all are part of the international agreement. And when we agree, agreed to uh, join this agreement, we want to fully cooperate with this agreement, not partially. I think this is very clear. Greg. All right, thank you, Dennis. Mr. President, this is so important. Let me just follow up on just one or two points and then move on. Again, no conditions. You will agree to this plan to destroy your chemical weapons. You had put conditions on this in the past, in the past week or so, but no conditions. The only condition that the agreement will entail and propose and provide. Okay. So now we are going to discuss the details with, these inter with the international uh, organization. So I don't have all the details to discuss it with you now. And I'm not the expert to have uh, specialized people to discuss the details. But in general, as headlines, whenever we join agreement see, as Syria, we are always committed to those agreements. Your problem was that there was a threat of force coming from the United States. There's still discussion of the so-called Chapter 7 resolution uh, being put forward to the UN, which would in include the possibility of force. Would that be a deal breaker for you if that went forward? What, what, what the deal breaker? 
Chapter 7 resolution in the UN which allows uh, uh, bodies in the UN to use force if you are not complying. Yeah, there's misunderstanding that we uh, agreed upon this uh, agreement because of the American threat. Actually, if you go back before the G20, before the proposal of this initiative, the Russian initiative, the American threat wasn't about giving, uh, handing over the chemical arsenal. It was about attacking Syria in order not to use the arsenal again. So it's not about the threat. Syria never obeyed any threat. Actually, we responded to the, American, to the Russian initiative and to our need and to our conviction. So whether they have Chapter 7 or don't have Chapter 7, this is politics between the great countries. So that's irrelevant to you? No, no, irrelevant. No, no. We obey because we want to obey. We have uh, completely different uh, incentives. And again, that time frame, which Dennis mentioned, one week to come up with a full accounting of your chemical weapons, November for the first inspectors to come in, mid-2014 for all your chemical weapons to be destroyed. That's an ambitious uh, timetable, yeah. even by expert standards, but you, you think that is doable? Yeah, but we have to discuss it, to discuss these details with the organization first. So you have to discuss Second, that first. Yeah, this is first. Second, the time is not our problem. It's the problem of the organization. How much time do they need to implement these agreements. So you don't because, necessarily sign on no, to no. that time. The only table. thing that we have to do is to provide the information and to, to make them accessible to our sites, which is not a problem. Oh, we can do it tomorrow. We don't have any problem. You could do so, it tomorrow. Yeah, of course, we don't have problem. The problem is how much fast they can be in getting rid of any chemical material. Because this is a very complicated situation. It's not, uh, it's not about will. It's about techniques. So only experts can answer your questions. Which leads me to my last question on Dennis's topic, and that is, that's exactly what some people are saying, that this is just a, a ruse, just, just, just a game, because it is so difficult. Experts say it will be so difficult to get rid of these chemical weapons, especially in a war situation like this. This is indeed buying you a lot of time. Even if you don't have war, it is difficult. Even if you have all the requirements uh, afforded by every party, it takes time to get rid of. So you're magic. saying this could take years? As, 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 as I said, we don't have exper experience in that regard, but some say it take one year. I didn't say years. Uh, as I heard, it takes about one year, maybe a little bit less, a little bit more. Thank you, Mr. But President. at the end, we have to, to, to see uh, the expert, and they will tell us. Okay. Let's go on to the latest breaking news. There's a lot of breaking news in this region right now, and that's the just-released UN report on the chemical weapon attack last month in the outskirts of Damascus right yeah. now. Uh, according to this report, and this is the report you said you were waiting for. Yeah. You said you didn't want to hear the U.S., you didn't want to hear U.K., you didn't want to hear France. You want the U.N. to speak. Mm -hmm. And they have spoken. And they have said, and I quote, there is clear and convincing evidence that the nerve gas sarin has been used. Mm -hmm. And they base this on environmental, chemical, medical samples. They say that killing happened on a relatively large scale. That killing included children. Do you agree with this assessment? Uh, they have the samples, and uh, they are supposed to be objective. We, uh, we didn't have any uh, formal uh, report. Uh, but uh, the question, if I agree about the use of sarin gas... Now, do you agree with the assessment that a chemical weapon attack occurred on the outskirts of Damascus on August 21st. That the information that we have, but the information is different from evident. It's different. Yeah, it's different. So you disagree with the UN report? No, no, I don't disagree. You have to wait till you have evidence. You can agree and disagree when you have the evidence. You should they have, have the it. evidence. They've interviewed uh, 40, 50 people on the ground. Yeah, yeah we have to discuss the evidence with them. They have to, we have to discuss it with them because they are going back. They haven't finished their mission yet. They are going back and we have to discuss it with them. We have to see the details, but we cannot disagree without having the opposite evidence. So nobody said that it's not used because in March, we invited the uh, delegation to Syria because the sarin gas was used in March. We had the evidence that it was used in March. And we'll get into that in a second. I want so to ask you about that. When I talk that. as official, I can talk about the evidence that I have. Okay, but, but they put out a 38-page report. I mean, it's been posted since yesterday. I don't know whether you've had no, a no, chance to look no. at it. We have to, we have to look at it. We have to discuss it before saying uh, Whether they are correct screen. or not. Yeah, okay. it's, it's only yesterday evening. Let's, let's go hypothetical then. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has said that this is, in fact, a war crime, that it is despicable, that it is a grave violation of international law. If that event happened, as they are saying it did happen, 
Would it be despicable? Would it be a violation of international law? That's self-evident, of course. Self-evident? Of course, that's self-evident. It is, a, is it is despicable, it's a crime. Because I'm sure you have seen the videos that we have seen of the, yeah, of the you, child you, yeah, but no one, gagging on the ground, of the people No one has on verified the, 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 the credibility of the videos and the pictures. Exactly. No one verified. The only verified things are the samples that the delegation go and took, samples Which, of blood, and other things from the soil and so Which on. Which is what they say they yeah, have. But you, you cannot build a report on videos if, if it's not verified. But they are basing it on the blood samples. Especially as we live in a world of, of forgery for the last two years and a half regarding Syria. We have a lot of forgery on the internet. Now there's a, a last key element to this UN report. And while the UN inspectors did not lay blame, that is they did not place culpability for the attack, there are many experts interpreting this report, some that I've spoken to in the last 12 hours, that frankly say this attack looks firmly like an attack coming from your government, from the Syrian government. Mm -hmm. They point to a few things. They say it was a large amount of gas, mm -hmm. sarin gas, maybe as much as a ton. The rebels could not have had that. Mm -hmm. They say the type of rocket, an M14 artillery, a 330 millimeter, never used by the rebels before, that they needed large vehicles to send these rockets up. The rebels don't have that. And maybe most importantly, they point to the trajectory of the rockets. They say that they were able to trace the rockets back from the impact point mm -hmm. to where they came from. And in two different occasions, this is according to the UN, they say that the start point was Quezon Mountain the headquarters mm -hmm. of the Republican Guard. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that? Uh, you, everything you mentioned is part of the report. E excuse me, sir? Everything you mentioned, all these points, are part of the report? These points are all part, of the, all part of the report. These okay. are all facts. No, the, the report didn't mention anything regarding the Republican Guards or things like this. They said the, they gave the azimuth tracking of the trajectory, uh -huh. and people have extrapolated from the azimuth track that yeah. that is where it was coming from, northwestern Damascus. Yeah. First of all, the sarin gas called the kitchen gas. Do you know why? Because anyone can make sarin in his house. They said it's very high quality, higher quality than even used in Iraq by uh, Saddam Hussein, your neighbor at the time. The, first of all, any rebel can make sarin. Second, we know that all those rebels are supported by governments. So any government that would have such chemical material can can be can hand it over to those. The experts say that they've seen they've tracked nothing like this. It's a ton of sarin gas. It is launchers. It is rockets. It, it's a whole fleet, which happen to be, from time to time, those kinds of armaments, those kind of munitions happen to be in your bases. No, no. This is uh, realistically cannot be possible. You cannot use the sarin beside your troops. This is first. Second, you cannot use. You don't use WMD while you're advancing. You're not being defeated. You're not retreating. The, the whole situation was in favor of the army. This is second. Third, we didn't use it when we had pro bigger problems uh, last year. Third, when they talk about any troop or any unit in the Syrian army that's used these kind of weapons, this is false for one reason, because chemical weapons can only be used by specialized units. It cannot be used by any other units like infantry or, or similar traditional uh, unit. So all what you've mentioned is not realistic and not true. Uh, definitely, so far as government, we have evidence that the uh, terrorist groups have used uh, sarin gas and those evidences, those evidence handed over to the uh, Russians. Just, so, yeah. this just is just second. The Russian uh, satellites, since the beginning of these allegations at the 21st of August, they said that they have information through their satellites that the rocket launched from another uh, area. So why to ignore this uh, point of view? So the whole story doesn't even hold together. It's not realistic. So no, we didn't. Uh, in one word, we didn't use any chemical weapons in the Ghouta because if you want to use it, you would ha harm your uh, troops, you would have harmed the tens of thousands 
of civilians living in, Syria, in Damascus. Just to conclude this portion, Mr. President, uh, will you allow more investigation? Will you allow UN investigators to come in, yeah. maybe to further investigate this attack? As you say, other attacks, there's something like 14 different attacks uh, where accusations are being made on both sides, and even uh, a UN team to decide on the culpability, the blame for this attack. You will allow those UN teams to come in. We invited them to come to Syria first in March, and we been asking them to come back to Syria to continue their investigations because we have more places to be investigated. The United States is the one who made pressure for them to leave recently before they finish their missions. When we invited the delegation, we wanted this delegation to have full authority to investigate everything, not only the use of the sarin or the gas or the chemical weapons, but to investigate everything about who did it and how. But the United States make pressure in order to keep it only by was it used or not. Why? Because I think the United States administration thought that if they are going to investigate who and how, they are going to, the to, to reach the conclusions that the rebels or the terrorists have used it and Thank not you. vice versa. Thank you, Mr. President. Dennis. Do, do you believe that uh, mm -hmm. Syria's position Syria, as yeah. a secular state Hmm. could be at risk in this conflict. Okay. Of course, when we have this kind of extremism and terrorism and violence, that will render the whole society uh, into a uh, more uh, closed society, more uh, ideologically uh, uh, fanatic. And that's what they are doing. That's what the extremists are doing. But, but what does it mean to have a secular state? I mean, there are questions about whether or not, you know, your position is authoritarian, whether you believe in democratic values. What does a secular state mean to Syria? The secular state means to deal with, the, with its citizen, regardless of their uh, religion, sex, and ethnicity. Because Syria is a melting, melting pot. We have tens of different cultures in Syria. If we don't have secular uh, states, that reflect this secular society, Syria will disintegrate. So that's what it means, secular society. Well, it, one of the uh, notions about this uh, very serious conflict is that it's a civil war. Uh, would you agree with that characterization that no. you're, you're in, involved in a civil no. war? Civil war should start from the society, should start from within. Civil war needs... So you're blaming outside clear, interest. It needs the clear lines geographical lines and social lines and sectarian lines that we don't have in Syria. We don't have these lines. Sectarian war, or sorry, civil war, doesn't mean to have 80 or 83 nationality coming to fight within your country supported by foreign countries. What we have is not civil war, what we have is a war, but it's a new kind of war. So, um you're blaming outside interests then for the acceleration of war. Now, uh, there's just some statistics that have come out from IS, uh, um, IHS Janes. They're a defense analyst group. They estimate the opposition as 100,000, 30,000 of which are hardline Islamists sympathetic uh, uh, to the 10,000 Al-Qaeda-inspired jihadists. Uh, now, any of these Syrian, are they, are they all outsiders? Where are they getting their money? First of all, no one has this precise number. This is exaggeration because most of the jihadists, when they come to Syria, they don't come through countries and they don't come through uh, organizations. They just come by plane to neighboring countries and they cross the border like any other one and they just want to come to Syria to, for the jihad, with the other jihadists. So nobody has these numbers. We know that we have tens of thousands of jihadists, but we are on the ground, we live in this country, what I can tell you that 80, and some say is 90, well, it's, it's difficult to be, to be precise. We don't have clear data and uh, precise data. 80 to 90 percent of the rebels on the ground of the terrorists are Al-Qaeda and their offshoots. These are the rebels? Yeah, but, but, but you're not, terrorists. you are not maintaining that all of your opponents are jihadis, are you? No, 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 not all of them. Of course, you have so many other different, but they are small, they are, they, are, they are becoming minority. At the very beginning, the jihadists were the minority. In, at the end of 2012, and during this year, they became the majority with the flow of tens of thousands from different countries. Where are they getting their money from? 
can you tell us right now? Uh, mainly from donations. But where? For donations from, from where? Everywhere can in, you in name in nations that in are the, donating? In the Islamic world. No, 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 they come from individuals, not from countries, mainly. Those are Qaeda. We don't know if some countries support them directly. We don't know. We don't have any information. I have to be very precise. But mainly from donations from people who uh, carry the same ideology in their minds. You mentioned before that some figures that are given are exaggeration. Can you tell us now how many Syrians have actually died in this conflict? We have tens of thousands of Syrians that have died, mainly because of the terrorist attacks, assassinations, and suicide bombers, the majority. And, and uh, how many are your government soldiers? More than uh, 15,000. And how many are insurgents? How many, no, how many uh, insurgents are jihadis? Uh, we don't have numbers because we, don't, we, we, we cannot count them. So, uh. um, well, there, but there are, there are innocent people being killed in this. And, and you're, you're, the reports are that your government has bombed uh, villages in which innocent people are killed. Um, what about that, Mr. President? What about, uh, what, what about the innocent what people about this? who are killed yeah. by the Syrian forces? The majority of the innocent people have been killed by the terrorists, not by the government. You cannot, not, 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 the, not a government, a wise government in the world that would kill its own people. How can you withstand if you kill your own people for two years and a half, while the West is against you, the regional country, many of them are against you, and your people are against you while you're killing them? Is it possible? Is it realistic? So, so you're, saying you're, not, you're saying you're not killing your own people, but your, your forces have have launched attacks on villages where your own people have been killed. No, actually what you're talking about is when the terrorists uh, infiltrating a residential area in villages and sometimes uh, in the suburbs of the cities and within uh, large cities and the army has to go there to get rid of those terrorists. It can, uh, the army should defend the civilians, not the opposite. It, you cannot leave them free killing the people and assassinating the people and behaving the people and eating their heart while you say, well, when you go to defend them you say that you are, you are killing your own people you don't but in every war you have casualties this is war you don't have a clean war you don't have soft war you don't have good war That's the, 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 the international community reports that Syrian rebel forces opposed to you are equally if not more worried now about jihadi fighters than they were, than they, than they were previously about your government now, in this, in this new development, is there an opening for you to achieve a rapprochement with your Syrian opponents? Yeah, here we have to differentiate between what you call opposition and the terrorists. Opposition is a political meaning, it's a political term. When you oppose somebody, like in your country, in any other country in the world, you have your own program, you have your own vision, uh, you have your own grassroots, and you go, you propose whatever you want regarding the political system or anything else, and you can change that system if you oppose the other party. Opposition doesn't mean to carry weapons and kill people, kill innocents, and to destroy schools, to destroy infrastructure, and to behave. What's the relation between opposition and behaving? 